What's up everybody? It is Chris from Team Aquascape and we have a lot going on today. We have numerous fall nettings because it's that time of year, leaves are starting to drop, they're changing colors, and the temps are starting to drop as well. So we need to get these ponds netted to prevent any leaf debris from getting into these ponds or at least as much of it as possible. So we have a number of ponds that we're gonna be seeing today. Anything from small little ecosystem ponds like you see behind me to larger ones with long streams, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna be sharing with you a lot of those little tips and tricks on how different ponds are, but how differently we net them as well. So you guys ready to do this or what? Let's go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. All right, guys, girls, so before we dive into the actual putting up of the net, let's first go through what tools I have in my bag in order to complete this fall netting. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. You can see I've got a box of our bulk protective pond netting. Now this comes in a few different sizes. We have 10 foot wide, 20 foot wide, 30 foot wide. I choose to use typically every single day, regardless of the size of the pond that I'm netting, a 30 foot wide piece, because I can typically get every single pond on my route done with a 30 foot wide piece. This is a 100 foot long piece of netting. So we just kind of cut it as we go and I'll show you that as we pull the net out. But let's go ahead and move along. I have a couple of steel stakes that we're gonna be using. What we're gonna do is we are going to be pounding them in the, the ground, right? With this, the stake driver. And this is what's gonna hold up our paracord cabling system that will help us create that netting tent that we're looking for. And we'll go through that here in a little bit, but I have a blower. I've got a couple of five gallon buckets just to help hold debris. Obviously I've got a garbage bag in case there's a lot of aquatic plants that need to be trimmed back and pulled out. In this case, we've got a few of them. I've got my paracord here. We just buy it in bulk. All it is is a quarter inch paracord. It's really, really great for getting nice and taut and not have to worry about it deteriorating the way you would with some of the normal ropes or anything like that. It's not elastic. So it allows us to get a nice taut line for us to drape that net over and really create a nice tight tent system and keep those leaves out of the pond. We've got that. One thing also that we definitely need are going to be be these ground stakes. These are what are going to help hold that netting into the ground. So basically a sod staple. They're a little bit shorter than some of those standard sod staples, but these come in bulk. So they're hundred count packs. So we sell these as well. I have some clamps. Okay. A lot of times we run into situations even like this, where we've got a brick wall in a pond. And sometimes it's very challenging to help pin that netting down without using sod staples. Sometimes we use rocks, that kind of stuff. But I always have a couple clamps on hand just in case I need them. I've got a set of pruners and a little machete. And that's just gonna help me cut those plants back very quickly and effectively and efficiently as well. So I've got a couple hand tools. Other thing that I have, and don't make fun of me, right? But I've got a little holster for all my stuff. Zip ties, my little ground stakes. I got my knife there. Wear it very proudly on my hip. That way I've got everything in hands reach because I'm gonna spend a lot of time on my knees kind of staking the thing down. So the last thing that's very, very important to have is because it's fall time, temperatures are dropping. What that also means is the water temps are dropping. So it's really time to start switching over your water treatments, right? Things like the ion gen are becoming less effective. Those automatic dosing system bags, maintain, clear, clean, that kind of stuff. You're starting to phase out and you're starting to get into the cold water bacteria stage. So I always keep a gallon of this on every job and I will add this while I'm going through the fall netting as opposed to using the normal maintain, clear, clean, any of those other ones, the beneficial bacteria. Now, keep in mind, you do need to understand and what water temperatures are and which bacteria to use. But majority of my ponds, I'm using this, but I will occasionally go back to the beneficial bacteria. This pond in particular has a number of aquatic plants. We've got some irises, which are some of those edgewater plants. We're gonna go ahead and cut those back. He also has some lilies, which will go in and we'll pinch back all the leaves and stems. But lastly, they also have a number of annual flowers. Now, we see this a lot in Chicagoland. A lot of people will use seasonal color to help spice up their landscape, which is great. But we wanna get those out because they're going to start dying back now that we're starting to get into some of these frosty mornings and some of these low overnight temps. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out so they're not trapped underneath the net, die, wilt, and then fall into the pond. So what I'm gonna do after that is I'm gonna go through it. I'm gonna take my blower and I'm gonna blow all of the leaves away from the pond, blow out the stream where some of those little crevices have started to collect some of these leaves that have already started to drop, blow everything out, out into the water, then I'll net it. And then we're gonna go ahead and we'll talk about the netting process of actually putting it up. So let's go ahead and cut that stuff back and then we'll go from there.
so two tools that I didn't mention earlier when I kind of ran through the rig for fall nettings was a little handheld blower and then a debris net. I actually prefer the, the little handheld blowers. You don't need a lot of horsepower with this. These are lightweight, they're small, compact, and they really fit well in the vehicle. It's not like having a big cumbersome backpack blower where you're blowing you know, thousands and thousands of square feet, right? You just need this for a few minutes each netting. So these handheld blowers are nice. Also on the debris net, I know there's a variety of nets out there. I actually prefer some of these shallower nets just because typically when you get a lot of debris in some of those bigger, you know, like the large mesh debris net, the black one, it gets really heavy and saggy. I like to just kind of skim the surface and get all of those leaves that have just fallen out of the water without stirring a bunch of stuff up underneath. I really prefer these shallow nets. Teach their own, but this is the one that I really like. After I blow everything, I'm gonna work my way from the waterfalls on down and I'll explain to you when we get to that point why we do it that way. So let's go. So now that we've kind of blown off around the feature, notice I went pretty far on both sides and also around it just to try and get as much of that leaf debris away from the pond as possible before I net. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and start picking all of the debris that remained inside of the water feature out. I always start up in like the headwater areas so that as I'm working my way through and I start collecting stuff in these little backwater catchment areas, a lot of times debris that I can't catch all at once will go back out into the water with the flow and get pushed back out in the pond. So rather than starting down by the skimmer and then working my way back up and then having to re-clean down by the skimmer, I always start up here first and just kind of follow the flow of the water into the skimmer box. So you want to make sure that we're efficient out here. The other thing that I would definitely want to point out to you is that this is the time when you really want to get as much stuff out as you absolutely can because it's only going to make your life that much easier when it comes spring clean out time. All right, so this is why, right? I just took the full rock skimmer lid off the top of the skimmer. This is why we push everything back out into the water column and we just allow the pump to help us do our job for us. So you can see that the skimmer basket is full of debris. And a lot of this stuff is stuff that I picked up and stirred up when I was blowing the pond out, that kind of stuff. So the last thing I always kind of clean is the skimmer box because everything gets drawn into this area and which is actually a great sign of showing that the pond was designed correctly and that the skimmer box is doing its job. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear out the rest of the stuff in this basket, clean out the skimmer box itself. There's still a few leaves in there, but it's just nice because it's like having a second set of hands on a net when doing it this way. All right, so now that we've got a majority of the leaf debris out of the pond, we're gonna go ahead and start putting stakes in and start getting that net tented and up over this water feature. One thing I wanted to point out before I covered up the skimmer box, so is actually where the pump is located. So it's coming out this side of the skimmer box into this bulkhead fitting, leading me to believe that the plumbing is running along the back side of the pond. The reason that's important is when I'm over here putting a stake back behind the skimmer, I wanna know where the pump is exiting the skimmer and where that plumbing is going so that I don't accidentally accidentally drive a stake down through that plumbing line. When we get to driving those stakes in, I got a couple more things I wanna add, but I wanted to show that to you before we cover up this skimmer box. All right, so now we're gonna get into actually driving these steel posts into the ground and putting up the paracord that will allow us to run the netting over as a tent. I showed you about where the pump came out of the skimmer box, showing you where the plumbing was coming out, but also one thing you wanna keep in mind, a couple other things, things like irrigation lines, low voltage cabling, pump cords, that kind of stuff. You can see I've got a, a pump cord coming out here and then I have my auto doser line that comes into the back of the skimmer here. I know where those are at. There's also some low voltage cabling that runs back this way. I'm going to put this stake right back behind this skimmer box. One thing I like to do is I kind of just do a little pilot dig just to make sure that I'm not going to run into anything. While I'm driving it down with my post driver, 
Okay, I'm gonna do a couple of kind of, not really soft taps, but I don't wanna just drive this thing all the way into the ground without any care of what's below it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and drive it in. It drove in pretty easy. Sometimes if the ground is very, very dry, it can drive in hard, or if there's something obstructing it down below grade that you can't see. The other thing I like to do is I like to drive it down four or five inches and then put my hand on the steel post. If I feel a hum or some kind of light vibration, a lot of times what that can be is the plumbing line running underneath. It's actually the water inside the pipe that's causing the pipe to vibrate and then the vibration is transferred up into the steel post. So anytime you're working around the biofalls or the skimmer or an edge of a pond, not knowing where that plumbing is, it's always a good idea to drive it in a couple of taps and then give this post a feel. Just make sure the coast is clear. Okay, we're all set. You just wanna make sure that it's nice and secure. You don't wanna drive it all the way into the ground. I actually like having these up a little bit higher, allowing me to have much more of a deeper angle with the netting. And I'll explain that when we run the paracord and start putting the netting up. The other thing I wanna talk about is the placement of these stakes. You want to stake the pond at opposite ends of each other and go lengthwise so that we can really make the square footage of the netting work for us. So I'm gonna put one back behind the skimmer box and I'm gonna go on the other side and go back behind the biofalls, going the longest distance of the pond and drop my second stake. All right, so now that we're putting up the paracord, I wanna keep this as taut as I possibly can. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of pressure, pull on that other stake, pull it around, and I'm just gonna keep it nice and taut and tight. Go ahead and wrap it a few times. I also, I wanna keep the paracord tied as high on the stake as I possibly can. The reason I do that is I don't want it all the way down here. As I said earlier in the video, I wanna have a nice hard angle for this net. That way these big wet leaves will shed off the side. If it's a shallower angle and that tenting is almost flat or, or very lightly pitched, a lot of times those leaves will actually just sit on top of the net, get real wet, heavy, soggy, and then have, that net will start to sag. So I keep it up top. What that also allows me to do is it allows me to secure the net up here at the top of the stakes, preventing it from ripping and tearing over the top of these stakes. All right, so notice how I have the net kind of draped over my paracord all the way to the back side of the pond. I went ahead and draped it this way, coming well beyond the outer perimeter or the total width of the pond. I'm gonna give myself a couple extra feet so that I can roll it in case I have to stretch it or anything like that. So I don't wanna ever cut it right at this edge. I'm gonna come back about two more feet, cut it there, and then I'll open this thing up. So now that I've opened the net up, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of lay one corner over the top, make sure I can go all the way down to the ground. I've got it spread out. Sometimes what'll happen in the box, it'll get kind of rolled up onto itself, but I've got it secured on that far stake over there. Now I'm just gonna take my other part and run it back over the cord back this way. So what I like to do is I'll kind of get it centered up. It's always good to know where your two corners are, which here's one of them. Go ahead and pull it this way. Now the fun begins and we start staking this thing down. So more often than not, we're using those ground stakes to uh, secure that liner around the perimeter of the pond. Occasionally what I'll do is I'll use these zip ties and I really love to use these at the base of these stakes or at the base of these posts, just to hold this netting in place at the very, very bottom down close to the ground. If you don't get it close to the ground, let's say you wanted to try and zip tie it somewhere up here, leaving kind of an open area that allows an area for leaf debris to blow in into the pond. So you wanna make sure that we secure this thing down at ground level all the way around the perimeter of the pond. So I like keeping the net nice and secure down here. Also what it does is it allows me, as I work my way back towards the other steel post, is it allows me to pull and put tension on this really tight tightening up that net. So I want to get an anchor point and then I'll work out from there. So as you're putting these staples or these U-shaped ground stakes in, you wanna make sure that you still are aware of where that pipe is and you don't go driving this thing down. If you get a lot of resistance upon trying to push it in, go ahead and back it out and try and find a different spot. Or sometimes you have to get creative, which I may have to do over into here. And what you can do is you can take some of these rocks that are along the edge, if they're movable, kind of wrap up the net like so, and go ahead and place it down and then that won't move.
right, so let's go ahead and talk about staking down. If there's a lot of excess netting, what I like to do is I like to take the net and just kind of roll it up. What that allows me to do is it also gives me a lot more meat for me to drive my staple into. So then I'll drive it through multiple layers of netting instead of just trying to drop it through that first single layer. So I'll kind of do that. It also looks way more professional and done right when it's done like that. Now that I'm working my way towards the back, you can see I'm kind of pulling up over top of the post, uh, pulling out any excess slack, getting the netting as possibly can. I know it's less than ideal, but sometimes we just have to use what we have. Fortunately, Frank, the homeowner, had a couple of extra bricks laying around, so I'm gonna use this to help weigh this net down. My fear is, is we get a stiff wind, stuff can get underneath here, so I really wanna secure this. It's kind of a challenge because of it coming up to a flat surface like that. So I'm gonna lay a series of bricks down. The clamps were great. I just don't think they're a good long-term solution while the net's up, so I'm gonna go ahead and use bricks to do this. All right, so this is a pretty easy, simple ecosystem pond that we just netted. Next, we're gonna go to a larger pond with a much longer stream, and we're gonna show you how to do one of these larger features. And it'll follow along a lot of the same guidelines as we had here, but it provides its own set of challenges. So hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two from that one. So let's get on to that one. That was number one, now we are at number two. It's a much different setting out here. We have a long sprawling stream system. We have a bridge element behind me and then we have, of course have the body of water, the pond itself. It's roughly an 11 by 16 pond. The thing that differentiates it from the last one, not only is the size, but the fact that we are going to be using two nets on this system to keep this area open for access because it leads you out to a beautiful fire pit. And fall weather pairs perfectly with a nice bonfire. So we wanna make sure that we keep the homeowners living the aquascape lifestyle but also to live their other lifestyles, like enjoying the fall weather and a nice bonfire. So I think it's important right now to really just point out the fact that you're not gonna get everything while you're here. Is it ideal if you can get the net up without any leaves getting in the pond? Of course it is. However, time frame wise, it just might not always work out. So you get as much as you can, get in there, kind of stir stuff up, start scooping the leaves out, get some of that algae, get a majority of it out that you can, but at some point you just kind of have to call it a day and go ahead and get this thing netted before the rest of them come down. So 
believe it or not, it is possible to overlap two pieces of net together. It doesn't all have to be one solid length. You just wanna make sure that you leave yourself at least 12 to 18 inches of overlap and then use some zip ties to tie them up together. And you wanna have those zip ties relatively close together to disallow any kind of gaps between the netting and make sure you pull everything nice and taut and you'll be good to go. This one provided a few challenges. Not only did we piece two pieces of netting together up here in the stream to make it all work and it looked fantastic, but we also took into account the walkway leading you back to their fire pit area. The last thing we wanna do is come in and take over somebody's backyard when putting up the fall netting. We want to allow them to continue to live their life and not just completely take over. So making sure that we left this pathway open was super important. get over to our next job, why don't we check back in at Aqualand inside of our retail store with the store manager, Kareem. She's gonna go over some of the different nettings and other products that we may use during fall netting season. Let's check her out. Hi guys, it's Kareem here at Aquascape Pawn Shop. I'm here to talk to you about netting. Netting is a key part of your fall closeout. We have three different sizes, seven by 10, a 14 by 20, and for larger ponds, we have a 28 by 30. That should hit most everyone's needs, but we also have a bigger box of a 30 by 100 and that can be customized to your needs it's great product to have and don't forget your cold water bacteria links in description and back to you Chris we are out here in a far west suburban backyard and it's just one of the most incredible landscapes I've ever seen you can also see where is he at? right there we've got Esteban over here Steve McMahon one of our service techs he and I are out here today to not only perform the regular service visit which is the pond maintenance of this water feature as well as the other water features on the property, but we are netting this pond today. We have a long meandering aqua blue stream that's about 40 feet or so, 45 feet from this land bridge all the way here, all the way up. And then on the other side of this land bridge is about a 16 by 25 foot pond that falls into a negative edge over on the back side of the pond back over there. So we're gonna net this pond in two different pieces. We're gonna net the pond portion with one big 30 foot net. And then we are going to take a 30 foot by probably 50 foot net and go all the way up that stream. So we're gonna go ahead and take some of these stakes and start dropping them in, running paracord, and then we'll come over, cut our netting, run it all the way up and then start staking it down. got our netting. I still have it attached in the box. I have not cut it yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting off all of the zip ties, start unfolding it. The last thing I wanna do is cut that end too short and then I don't have enough to cover the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and start unwrapping this and getting it attached up here and then kind of working my way back down. is now all netted. As you can see, we've got the top netted. That's been netted for about 20 minutes or so. You can see all the leaves already collecting on top, which is a good sign. You can see we left this pathway open along the land bridge. And then over here, one thing I wanted to point out also was this whole pond overflows into a negative edge down here. Now we've got the lids exposed currently, but what I wanted to show is that we actually netted the entire area where the water's infiltrating down. I don't want that to get full of debris down there. So we went ahead and dropped the net all the way down so that it'll catch any debris that wants to collect over there in the net before it gets down into the gravel, clogging this area and then potentially having a serious issue later on with the reservoir being impacted with debris. Here's that back side. Again, we're gonna walk back over the land bridge. There's the pond side. Negative edge is covered as well as the rest of the pond. And then here's that long meandering stream. You can see the net is doing its job. All right, guys, we are at our last stop of the day for fall nettings. This has not only a fountainscape element to it, but it also is a pondless waterfall. So I know you've seen a small ecosystem pond. You've seen a large ecosystem pond with a long stream, with a bridge element. So you've seen a few different types of water features, but this will be the last one you're gonna see in this episode. It's probably the easiest one to net out of all three that you've seen so far, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. There's not a whole lot of debris. Let's just go ahead and jump right in and get this thing tackled.
Well, you can't be right all of the time. So even though I knew that all of that plumbing went that way, with the exception of that small urn, what I didn't consider was the stinking autofill line coming off of the house. Fortunately for me, it was still turned on at the house, but I started driving this stake down and felt a little resistance. I thought it was just part of the foundation of the patio here. Unfortunately, I started seeing water and led me to believe that I obviously hit something in the ground that had water traveling through it. I'm gonna have to pull this stake out. Fortunately for me, I've got a quick little repair coupling. I'll be able to make that repair. It just stinks because I should have known better. Anyways, minor, minor speed bump. All right, so not quite to the repair yet, but the autofill line is this quarter inch poly tubing. I've got a couple of the compression quarter inch couplings on here. I'm gonna go ahead and dig up around this stake here. I also went to put it in a couple other places. I'm just gonna go ahead and double check, make sure I didn't hit the line there and there as well. And just to make sure that I fix everything before we put the nut up, I don't want to fire this thing back up and have it still leaking somewhere else because I did try and drive the stake in there as well as there. So. Bonehead move on my part, but it's a pretty easy fix if you have all the right tools. So this is the area where I drove the stake down and went right through it. I am going to backtrack just to make sure that I didn't hit it anywhere else, but this is where I'll start. Thank God I had some extra tubing here, but I'll go ahead and start here and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this up and just see where I'm at and then I'll rebury everything. All right, so upon inspection, it looks like everything else is good in through here. I just need to kind of get it back over here and then use the couplings to piece the two pieces of pipe together. But it could have been a heck of a lot worse. So thank God I had everything. Go ahead and get this stuff put back together, buried, and get my stake in. and girls thank you so much i mean it's been a fun action-packed day we have had small ecosystem ponds we've had large ecosystem ponds with long streams land bridges we have a palace waterfall behind me with a fountainscape all fall nettings Whew. And thank God we had the right tools for the job. Also, when we had that little hiccup here earlier, just goes to show you, stay prepared out there. You never know what you're gonna run into. Thanks so much again. We'll see you guys next time.